Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris here with Prestige Auto. Today we've got this 2014 Murano in the garage. We're gonna be changing out the rear wheel bearing. It looks like this right here. And uh, very simple to change out. Um, so when you're driving down the road and you hear like a roaring sound coming from one of your wheels, if you can kind of turn left or right a little bit and sway, you can hear it kind of like get louder or change the pitch of the sound from turning left to right, it's probably your wheel bearing. Simple change, um, I think this one was about 90 bucks and it's gonna take us probably about 15 minutes to change this thing out. So let's get our tools together and I'll show you how to change this thing out. All right guys, we got our tools together. Now, uh, first thing we need to do is remove this wheel. It is uh, 21 millimeter, so let's take this thing off first. All right guys, we got that wheel off there now so we uh, can see what we're working with. The tools that we're gonna need to do most of this job is a 19 millimeter wrench, 19 millimeter socket, needle nose pliers. Um, I think this one is, uh, what is that? 17 millimeter, 32 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and maybe a hammer. But that's most of the tools that we're gonna need. To start off, we're gonna take off this brake caliper and it is a 19 millimeter. There is a, uh, there's a bolt there and there's one like straight down below it, you'll see it. So um, you can use the socket to break this one free, but you might be able to do it a different way, but I had to use my 19 wrench to get this bottom one because this bar right here is in the way to where you can't get a socket. So you can get a wrench in there and get the bottom one, socket up top, let's get this caliper off. Once we remove that, we will remove the rotor. Um, pretty much just sitting on there. Sometimes they get a little sticky. You might have to tap it with a hammer to get it off, but let's remove those things and see what's next. Okay guys, we got those two bolts out of there. We're gonna slide off this caliper now. This one's coming off pretty easy, but sometimes they don't. I have had to like maybe stick a little uh, screwdriver in there and just pry just a little bit and get it out. Sometimes they're stuck. Anyways, let's get this thing out and we're just gonna let it sit to the side right here. And we'll need to remove your rotor now. Now sometimes they'll just slide right off. This one seems to be stuck on there a little bit. So we're gonna give it a little tappity tap. Okay, we got it off. You can see it was kind of stuck. There's all kinds of junk in there that's pouring out right now. Just a bunch of old rust and junk that gets stuck in there. Now that we've got this off, let's set it to the side. Okay guys, we're getting much closer and this job is already almost done. We are inside here. We're gonna need to take off this um, big nut right here and there's gonna be a little pin. So we'll get our, uh, we'll get our needle rose pliers and we'll take this off, take off this pin. And then this big nut right here is the 32 millimeter. Let's get those off. All right, you see we took that little pin out and we have got this nut loose. So I'm not gonna take it all the way out. And I'll show you why I'm going to leave it threaded on a little bit because that thing is stuck in there. It's splined in. So we'll get our hammer and just give it a couple little gentle taps. It breaks that free in there. You can see it's free now. And then that way we don't mess up the threads on your CV axle because we're going to reuse the CV axle. Now we can remove that bolt all the way and that thing is free. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, we got that nut off. We've got that loose right there. You can push it in. So it's free. We need to make sure we take off this wheel speed sensor next. It's back here in the back. It's a 10 millimeter. Let me turn this flashlight. Maybe you can see it. Yeah. Okay, it's a 10 millimeter and this thing pulls out. Sometimes it gets a little stuck. So be careful not to break it. Let's get this out real quick. Okay, the nut is out. Sometimes you can just twist it back and forth and slide it out, but this one seems a little stuck. So I'm gonna just get a little screwdriver, a little flathead under it right here and twist you can see it go up twist on the top just 
just wiggle it a little bit. I'm gonna do that and tug on this wire at the same time and it'll probably slip right out. All right, I've been wiggling on this one and twisting back and forth and it's still a little snug in there. So sometimes you guys are just gonna have to wiggle a little at a time. There we go, it finally popped out. Um, be careful because you don't wanna snap this thing off. It will break in there. So we've got it out, it's really dirty. We'll clean it off with some electrical cleaner or something before we stick it back in there. But for now, we'll just let that hang to the side. I'll put that 10 millimeter bolt back in there so that we don't lose it and move on to the next step. Now the next step is going to be, there are four bolts holding this thing on. You can see one in here, one there, and then one down here, and one down there. And they're on the inside, around to the inside here. Let me get my flashlight, you can see. Okay, there's gonna be one. Oh, there's one here. There's gonna be one hidden up in here. There's one right there. There's one right around the back. So I think these are a 17 millimeter. We'll break these free and then we'll take those out. We have got those four bolts out of there and as you guys can see this is a pretty easy job so this thing's going to be stuck in there a little bit not always sometimes it'll fall out and uh so just be careful but this one's kind of stuck in there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to tap it lightly with a hammer up top at the bottom left and right just jiggle it out a little bit be careful because all this assembly is is sandwiched in between those and it's going to come fall down so what i do is, is i just hold one hand hold this all in place while i'm tapping this once this breaks free, I'll continue to hold this and I'll slide this one out. We will have the new one ready right here. And as soon as this one pops out, I will set that one into place. We'll have one nut. We'll get one bolt and go ahead and thread it up and it'll kind of hold everything in place. We can snug it all down. So let's, uh, let's hold that and tap it with a hammer and get this old one off. Pop that new one back into place. All right, I've got that thing loose now. It's kind of being held in there by this uh, CV axle. So uh, everything's held in place. Now, whenever we take this off, here's an old one here. On the inside, it's gonna have, a, it sits inside this little recess thing inside there, but it's gonna have a bunch of junk and debris in there. So as soon as we move, remove this one, just take your finger and kind of blow in there real quick and clean it up so that this next one, as you can see, it's clean and it'll set in there much smoother if we clean all that stuff out. So let's get that, get that one taken off, clean it out a little bit and slap that new one in place. Okay guys, I just want to show you what that looked like inside there once you remove that. Um, it just has, you know, like I said, it gets junk inside there so we'll just clean it up and blow that out you can see the spline you can see the spline right there where the new one is splined so you just want to make sure that you just don't force that thing on there you want to twist it until your spline slide on and then you can see your old bolt holes there you can see on the back that they're closer on each each side right here that's the way it wants to go back in like that so let's clean this up a little bit more slide that new one in place and we'll start putting those bolts back in from the back and snug it down Okay, I wish I would let you guys hear the new one before I put it on, but I didn't think about it. If you listen, this is what the bad one sounds like. Not sure if you can hear that, but you shouldn't hear that at all. On the new one, if you spin it like that, you'll hear nothing. Smooth as eggs. So, this one's definitely bad. Alright, now we've got that thing snugged down. We need to get this center nut back on and put that pin back in, so let's do that. All 
right now you guys don't forget to put your wheel speed sensor back in it goes back in that hole right there let's slide it in be gentle not to break it you would twist it back and forth just a little until it sets in all right it's in there put your 10 millimeter back in and we'll be done with that part okay to finish this up we need to put that ugly rotor back on let's grab it and it just sits right back on these studs right here okay we'll need to put our caliper back on you'll see well i don't know if you can see i put this on covered it up let me slide this back off there's two tabs right here that's the tabs that your caliper set on that we removed the first bolts from let's get this on okay now that we've got our rotor back on we're going to get our caliper you want to make sure that your brake pads didn't fall out of place and make sure that they're kind of spread back apart to slide back over this rotor also, you don't want to twist this caliper in any weird way and keep kink up your brake line. So make sure that your brake line flows like it should. Let's get one bolt ready. I like to slide it in place and go ahead and put in this top one. That'll kind of hang it in place and then we'll go down to the bottom one, get it in place and then we'll snug it down the rest of the way. So you see this brake pad here actually just fell out. So I'm gonna pop it back in place, spread it apart there and we'll slide it back over this rotor. Okay, we've got that thing in place. We've got the bolts hand tightened in there. So now we're gonna get our air ratchet or our ratchet and we're gonna snug these back down into place. All right, now that we've got everything snug back into place, this shop is pretty much done. We just gotta get this wheel back on, lower her down and check it out. That is going to wrap up this job. That went pretty smoothly. Like I said, I bought that part for about $90, maybe $100 at AutoZone. If you were to take this to the shop, it'd probably be about $300, maybe $400. So uh, no need to spend that money. Easy job to do. It only required maybe four or five different tools and we got it wrapped up. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that helped you. Please hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching. Okay.